The color red is a favorite for many, and it's an important one as well. After black and white, red is the first color we see. It's also been a symbol of one's social status, political rank, and personal expression. I've previously made a video on the history of the little black dress, and how black has been used to make a statement. But the color red is also an especially eye-catching color to wear. Culturally, we've seen this color representing multiple concepts, including power, danger, sinfulness, and romanticism. There's a psychological phenomenon of the red dress effect, where the color red can make someone appear more attractive and desirable. This might reflect how in pop culture, red typically acts as a shorthand for characters that are intended to stand out. Some artists and brands have associations with the color red. For instance, it's the main color for Valentino. Taylor Swift would become associated with the color red, and named one of her albums after the color to represent her emotions of love, anger, and jealousy. There's also the K-pop group Red Velvet. And let's not forget the unwritten rule to not wear red to a wedding. Red has been a statement piece for centuries. Even earlier this year, red seemed inescapable, and probably will continue to be in the future. We're going to look into the context and thematic relevance behind some iconic red dresses and how they reflect popular styles of their time. But first, we're going to look into how the color red has been perceived in different periods. So now, let's get started! For thousands of years, red had varying historic symbolisms in different cultures. In ancient Egypt, red was reserved for royalty or anyone of higher position and had correlations with health and victory. In China, red was also a popular color for royal women as a way to display their power. Red would also be a representation of courage and happiness due to the color symbolizing fire. This would also be the traditional color for wedding dresses, as well as in the Indian subcontinent, with red referring to commitment. In medieval Europe, red was a symbol of power for its ties to nobility. The particular shade of scarlet was a representation of martyrdom within the Catholic Church. For instance, on the day of her execution, Queen Mary of Scotland had her outer garments removed to reveal a bright scarlet gown as a way to demonstrate her innocence. But for non-royal women, red was typically avoided for its boldness and sinful connotations. During the late 18th century, red was a popular color within the royals and aristocracy, especially with Marie Antoinette, who's one of the biggest and most controversial style icons of the time. But in the aftermath of the French Revolution, red and other vibrant colors were regarded with overconsumption and lack of morals. In The Mirror of Graces, or The English Lady's Costume, written in 1811, the author claiming to be a lady of distinction advised young distinguished ladies to wear soft colors of pink, light blue, or lilac, while mature distinguished ladies are to wear deeper hues of black, yellow, or dark blue. Notice the lack of red. During the 1860s, synthetic dyes would emerge in popularity, all from a scientific discovery made by William Perkin. For the remainder of the Victorian era, red would be in style, making a very passionate statement. At the end of the Victorian era, during the 1910s and 1920s, red continued to be a stylish color. When cinema started to become a dominant form of entertainment, with the advent of Technicolor, we started to see more iconic red outfits. It would be safe to say that the looks of Scarlett O'Hara are the second most popular movie fits of the 1930s. In the first half of the film, she wears a white and red dress when proclaiming her love for her longtime crush, representing her passionate emotions. This would be like the 12th time she'd tell him this, by the way. But as always, she gets rejected. Instead, Scarlett marries her sister's fiance because he has money that she desperately needs. When telling her this, she wears a dress with a modest, almost demure cut, but in the shade of bold red. She's trying to appear as the innocent one in this situation, but it's not exactly working. But this marriage doesn't last, so she marries Red Butler. As she continues to feel unhappy, she longs for an escape in her life and wears a crimson gown almost resembling something from a medieval fairy tale. The shade also displays her fiery temper and pride traits that have caused many of her problems. But after being caught in a moment with her longtime crush, she's disparaged within her circle. She attends her crush's birthday party in a red dress her husband chose with the goal to embarrass her. With this dress being a tight fit with a low neckline, Scarlett is met with disapproval from the other guests. Since as Rhett put it, there's nothing modest or matronly about it. Here, the use of red goes back to its sinful connotations, while also being reminiscent of the Scarlet Letter. But here's where we get to see one of the most iconic resting bee faces. In this film, red is used in scenes that involve passion, anger, and indecency. The color makes a grand statement. The 1950s was a particularly good time for red dresses in cinema. With the color relating to passion, 
red dresses were typically worn by bombshell type characters. Red would also convey to the audience a sense of energy and excitement. One example of this was in the Hitchcock film, Dial M for where Grace Kelly plays a woman who is unfaithful to her husband, so he plans to have her unalived so he can have her inheritance. Her outfits were designed by Edith Head, who previously designed Grace Kelly's outfits in Rear Window. Her costuming serves thematic relevance, as Head stated, We did an interesting color experiment with Grace Kelly's clothing. I dressed her in very gay and bright colors at the beginning of the picture, and as the plot thickened, her clothes became gradually more somber. Her second outfit in the film has her in a bold red dress, which would be the brightest color she wears. Similarly to Gone with the Wind, the dress's color is a representation of her character's false modesty. But in a showcase of her abundant wealth, the silhouette matches the trendy new look designed by Dior, which would be the most sought after dress style of the 1950s. Another famous red dress of the decade was in Funny Face. Audrey Hepburn portrays Joe, a reserved bookstore worker, who becomes an up-and-coming fashion model. She is taken to Paris where we see a sequence of her many photo shoots in different outfits. Through modeling, she starts to come out of her shell. These shoots portray her in active positions while wearing eye-catching clothing. One of these is a form-fitting red dress with a matching shawl and white gloves as she walks down the steps of the Louvre Museum. The film conveys emotions of love, which are greatly represented in this scene. This dress was one of the regular collaborations between Hebron and Givenchy. Hebron's preference of relaxed styles and Givenchy's simplistic take on high fashion would tie them together and create some of the most famous looks in pop culture. In the 1960s, styles were becoming more colorful and risk-taking. With eye-catching hues being used as a form of self-expression, red was still one of the most popular colors. Dresses would begin taking on various silhouettes and unique forms. One of these were shown in the very mod film, Blow Up with the appearance of a red mesh outfit. This period was when Yves Saint Laurent would become one of the most popular and influential designers, and would create outfits for various films, one of which is 1971's Max and the Junkman, which shows a look that I find to be super underrated. Romy Schneider portrays what is basically the movie's fan service girl, and everything she wears in this movie is delivering. I'm guessing this dress is made out of satin, which adds a sense of luxury while the color emphasizes her sultriness, while the cut and short length gives it a contemporary feel. As we enter the 1980s, we're going back to the 1920s. Another famous red look was featured in the color purple, with Shug singing Miss Seeley's Blues. With the lack of sleeves, low neckline, and dropped waist, this dress evokes the flapper look of the time which, style-wise, was a far cry from what was seen as acceptable in the rural deep south. Wearing a dress with a very modern style makes a big statement of not being afraid of standing out in a restrictive environment. The use of sparkly red sequins conveys a romantic aura, which matches the song's supportive and actual themes. In a later scene, Celie tries on her dress, where she shares an intimate moment with Shug but this relationship is explored more in the novel. You could say that this dress represents freedom from repression with its vibrant red color. Another sparkly red dress would come in animated form in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The story is set in 1947 Los Angeles and features a famous cartoon wife, Jessica Rabbit, who is a singer at a trendy club. In the novel, she acts as a gold digger stereotype, but in the film, she's more moral and has a personality and design based on 1940s movie sirens. A big inspiration for her character was model Vicky Dugan, who had a signature look of outfits with very low backs, and I'm sure evoked the same type of reactions people had to Jessica. The dress also features an exaggeratedly high slit, which I'm gonna guess was a nod to gentlemen prefer blondes, who were also performers. Her introductory scene is an homage to the Tex Avery short, Red Hot Riding Hood, which pretty much invented the Awuga meme. That short would be referenced a lot in media. Like I mentioned before, the color red is a must-have for any X symbol character, and also reflects the love she has for her husband. She's not bad, she's just drawn that way. Heather Chandler, on the other hand, is just bad, but she pioneered the Queen Bee character type that would soon become a mainstay in high school films. The color red is a representation of power in this movie, where the leader of the Heather's clique is the only one who is, quote unquote, allowed to wear it. The iconic red scrunchie symbolizes who's in charge of the group, as well as the rest of the school. Heather Chandler was modeled as a high school version of the then First Lady, Nancy Reagan, where red was known as her signature color. In this period, in context of the film, red was seen as a symbol of power and luxury. When she attends a party, she wears a mature-looking scarlet red dress, something that looks more fitting for a White House get-together. Through this dress, it's possible that she's trying to make up for her young age by appearing more distinguished than most of the attendees. But appearances alone can only tell so much. After her downfall, her reign would be replaced by Heather Duke, 
who would also adopt red as her main color, showcasing its importance. Heather's is a high school fight telling of the greed is good culture of the 1980s, with red being presented as an almost villainous color. Red would have more positive associations in Pretty Woman, a story set out as a modern fairy tale. The character, Vivian Ward, goes through major stylistic changes in the film, her looks progressively becoming more sophisticated. The cut is an off-shoulder evening gown with a plunging sweetheart neckline, giving it an almost princessy look. The shade of red provides a mix of elegance and some seductiveness. The thematic focus of the film is the longing for fantasy, and as she attends her first opera, this red dress would be her official Cinderella moment. The eye-catching color and design made this look one of the most famous dresses in cinema, and a Versace dress of a similar style was worn by supermodel Cindy Crawford in the subsequent Oscars, but gives off a more sultry vibe. Another sultry red dress was in The Mask. The story is set in a 90s meets 1940s Tex Avery slash Looney Tunes universe. With introducing Cameron Diaz's character as a hello nurse type, it's fitting for her to wear a dress in a deep red color. The fit is a tight strappy midi dress with an essence inspired by Jessica Rabbit and Marilyn Monroe. In the script, this look was described as a heart-stopping red dress that's fighting a losing battle to restrain her décolletage, clearly giving off lusty connotations. Her general style has some of the most direct references to the mid-20th century, further providing the retro aesthetic the movie has. Personally, I would say this is another look that is quite underrated. 1995's Clueless is known for being one of the most stylish films ever made. The story is based on Jane Austen's Emma, but is set in a Beverly Hills high school. We see quite a few red dresses conveying different moods. When attending a Christmas party, it's only appropriate for Cher to have on a short red Alaya dress. The signature Alaya style had tight, form-fitting silhouettes. It's definitely a status symbol to wear a dress like this, as it's made by a totally important designer. A more romantic take on the red dress is when she goes on a date that isn't really a date. The style of this outfit is an archetypical seductive look, but the red dress effect might not work 100% of the time. When Cher's plans end up not working, her view on the world and herself begins to shake up, which is what happens to Neo in The Matrix. When he's inside the Matrix, he's in a sea of black suits, but is distracted by a woman in a red dress, showcasing the color as intrinsically eye-catching and statement-making. The woman in the red dress appears for only a few seconds, but still has one of the most notable outfits in film. Red being a symbol of strength and power was used in The Hunger Games. The division of class in these films are represented through clothing and color. With Katniss Everdeen coming from the most impoverished district, her initial scenes has her and her fellow citizens dressed in muted colors of mostly light gray and beige, while the citizens of the capital wear vibrant colors reminiscent of the Rococo style to convey their frivolousness and superficiality. In the novel, Katniss's interview dress was covered in jewels, but the costume designers felt that a replication of this would look too garish, and instead went for a design that Katniss would look good in. The style looks like a dress you could see on the red carpet, but when Katniss spins, she literally becomes the girl on fire. Designer Cena created this dress as a way to showcase Katniss's brave spirit, as well as symbolizing the bloodshed lost in creating these games to entertain the elite class. Wearing red for an interview like this presents that Katniss won't allow the tyrannical President Snow to control her. Red would take on somewhat of a revenge motif in Cruella. This film is intended to explain the villain origin story of Cruella de Vil, presenting her as somewhat more sympathetic with an underdog story arc. Set in London during the height of the 70s punk craze, Cruella's eclectic outfits took inspiration from designers like John Galliano, Vivian Westwood, and Alexander McQueen, all of which are known to have a more alternative aesthetic compared to most high fashion brands. This dress is a redesign of an old collection by the Baroness, hinting that Corella could simply become the new her. The cut is also reminiscent of her style, but the red makes the dress more eye-catching, evoking a sense of excitement that a new era in fashion is about to emerge. Costume designer Jenny Beaven stated that red would be the most anarchic color, for in this scene, Corella is the only one wearing it. For the rest of the film, she'd be trademarked wearing outfits of mostly black and white, with red adding a splash of color to enhance her general rebelliousness. The horror film Pearl focuses on a farm girl in the 1910s living in a technicolor nightmare. She progressively loses her mind as she lives in a repressive environment while longing for a world of glamour and prestige. One outlet to escape the simple life is to audition for a spot in a dance troupe. It's not the most prestigious opportunity, but it's still something. The dress she chooses to wear was taken from her mother's closet. This design was a common late 19th century lingerie dress, the vast majority of which were white. 
almost never seen in colors like bright red. Even when wearing something intended for outdoor activities, her passion for the limelight is apparent. But because dresses like these were starting to come out of style in the 1910s, she appears more old-fashioned compared to the other candidates. Her choice of wearing this might have hindered her opportunity to be selected for the troupe. Near the end of the movie, as Pearl stalks and attacks Margaret, her inner rage is revealed, appearing as a walking danger sign. She ended up not going over the rainbow, and probably never will. Interestingly, I've seen this movie being described as a coquette film, and at first I was so confused, but the more I look at it, the more sense it makes. This aesthetic is edgier than you might think. Overall, the color red is known to be one of the most impactful colors to wear because of its variety of symbols. Red can be interpreted as a signifier of danger, fury, sophistication, lustiness, and bravery. If you'd like to see a video for the history of dresses of a different color, I'm personally thinking of orange and yellow, you're free to let me know in the comments. It was a lot of fun to examine red, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye!